Hey, YouTube. Well, it's fast approaching that time of year again, isn't it? One of the very most common things I see on Facebook at the moment is complaints from old school gardeners, from gardeners who know what they're doing, that all the Facebook groups are flooded with the same questions. Well, let me tell you something, guys. Subscribe, because that's what I'm here for. I try and answer as many of the, uh, of the gardening questions as I possibly can with the space I have. So please subscribe. On today's agenda, or on, in today's video, is only, it was going to be other things, but is only sowing potatoes in buckets. I'm seeing it getting asked a lot, so I've covered it exclusively in this video with a little bonus thing at the end about if you're using weed membrane. So stay tuned, please subscribe, and I'll see you in a sec. For today, one, I've got two main planting jobs for me to do for today. One of them might be a bit early for some of you out there, but with, with the tools I've got, I'm able to get away with it and I'm planting my potatoes. This year, I'm not doing as big a crop because we're still eating last year's crop now. But last year I'd covered most of my open ground with potatoes, that this year is not happening. So I'm gonna get the containers ready. I've got some compost and we're gonna look at sowing seed potatoes in containers. Not in the non in the ground this year, as far as I'm planning for anyway. So I'll go get my stuff together and we'll get on with it. Well, sowing potatoes in containers. This is a 30 litre container. And uh, a lot of people will say, well, why not grow in a 50 litre? You can get 50 litres. You can. But Tony Smith over at Simplify Gardens, he spent years, and I mean years, <coughs> excuse me, testing different container sizes. 15, 30, 50, 75, I think he even did 100. And he found that bang for buck, so factoring everything in, compost, feed, um, the amount of potatoes growing, the amount of seed potatoes gone in, the amount of potatoes coming out, he factored in and he did all the research for you and found that 15 litre was the most productive. So that's what I've done and that's what I've done for three years now. Bought these containers three years ago. Once again, I'll provide a link in the video description below. I might remember, I'll try and remember to provide two links. One will be an Amazon affiliate link and one will be a link for grow seed. The affiliate link will help me out. The grow seed will help out a friend of the channels. So these 30 litre containers, like I say, three years I've had these. I've grown potatoes in them every year and I've grown stuff through winter in them every year once the potatoes have come out. And so far, I've not broken a single one. So let's get on with planting the potatoes. I'll sort of uh, try and find you a good angle. First up is my Charlottes, they're my first earlies. They're a determinant potato and I'll explain what that is whilst I'm planting them. A determinant potato is a potato that grows all on one level. Most first earlies and the majority of second earlies are a determinant potato. What that means is you can actually well, I'll show you. We're going to put a couple of inches of compost in the bottom there. We're going to grab us potatoes and I'm going to go next to the handles. Okay. It's important to keep a track of where your potatoes are. Then I'm going to rotate and I'm going to half fill the bucket. So I'm going to take the bucket up to halfway. And that's not because 
That's not because I'm going to mound them up, but because these are a determinate potato, I'm then going to plant two more at opposite sides. And what a determinate potato does is it all grows on a single level. Whereas something like your main crop grow up, so the single plant will grow up and then it will send out potatoes at varying points up the root stem. A determinant doesn't. So what you have is a nice big crop of some nice salad potatoes in one bucket. The compost I'm using is Jack's Magic. I'm not going to give you an affiliate link for that because ordering compost off the internet is a very much a false economy. It costs you a fortune. And for something like Jack's Magic that's already quite expensive, you don't want to do that. I'm just going to take some of this soil back out actually because I've got another trick for sowing potatoes in buckets. Once again, not mine. I think this was Nigel from Muddy Boots. What he does is he gets some barley straw. Can you see that? Some barley straw. This isn't a chopped barley straw. That would have been my preference, but I couldn't get any. And then what you do is you put a good inch or so of chopped barley straw on top of your potatoes. And that does two things. Well, one thing really, it's all to do with the same thing. but it'll help keep the frost off the surface of the, of the compost. But what I'm then going to do is obviously these are going to need watering in. But what this straw is going to do is it's, especially when we get into summer, is it's going to keep the water in. It's also itself going to log with water and release that into the compost and around the base of the plants when it's needed. So it's a good tip for the sake of a couple of quid. Now, if, you, if you've got a friendly stables nearby, a bale of straw will do the same thing. Just put it in a bucket and chop it up with some, set of some, uh, some shears first. This is actually, although it's not chopped, it's pretty fine. The only thing you don't want to be using is you don't want to be using meadow hay. Meadow hay tends to be full of grass seed and you'll contaminate your compost because what you can do, although I'm opening fresh bags this year, is this compost you can reuse for up to three years. You could use it further if you wanted to risk uh, blight and things like that. But you can use this compost for up to three years, topping up its nutrients with fish blood and bone. What I actually would have preferred is to sow these with fish blood and bone mixed into the compost. I've been around four, four, two garden centres and two bagging shops today and one supermarket and I could not get a box of fish blood and bone for love no money so I gave it up as a bad job and what I'll do is I'll feed these progressively through the year with something like this <clears throat> a liquid seaweed fertilizer people regular viewers of the channel know that I swear by liquid seaweed fertilizers um, I've struggled to get my hands on some until today, so I've stocked up. But there you go. I've been asked, and I've seen quite a lot of people recently asking about sowing potatoes in containers. There you go, potatoes sown in a container. They're new potatoes. I'm going to quickly do another one with you with main crop potatoes, just so that you can see the difference. I just need to label this bucket just so I know what's in it. 
I don't need to worry about labeling it with a name, but just a visual tag will tell me that this is a first early because I'm only doing Charlotte's as a first early and Desiree as a main crop. One of the other oh, question I see getting asked quite frequently is do you sow all your potatoes at the same time? I always have. So my main crop and my first earlies, they all go in at the same time. As far as I'm concerned, the first earlies, the main crop, things like that, what it actually refers to more so is when they come out of the ground. And I'll try and remember to put on the screen in the time lapse that's coming up after I've sown these something that's a bit more descriptive on that something that says you know because I can't remember offhand your harvest times first early second early but I think I think it's something like first early is 12 weeks main crop 18 to 22 weeks till they're ready so I'm just gonna grab a couple of main crop potatoes two to a bucket opposing corners or opposing sides I'm not paying too much attention to which way up but that's just me and then I'm going to fill the bucket up I'm not going to mound and I'm not going to worry about it it'll be a little bit longer before they're poking to the, the surface but in three years in my containers at least I've never mounded up And it's as simple as that. So your, your, your main crop are simpler than your first earlies. Two potatoes, 15 litre pot. Straw, chopped barley straw on top. Obviously this, 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 bar, this straw is going to break down. But there you go simple as so I'm going to get on with the rest and I'm going to time lapse it also I'll keep some of it in and like I said I'll try and remember to put on the side of the screen so the harvest times these are going in for me 19th of March is it 19th of March let me check it is 19th of March these are going in might be a little bit early for me I'm not past my first frost dates but the tubs will keep the potatoes safe plus these are going to go in the polytunnel. They're not going to be left outside. But last year, I sowed on the 20th, both directly in the soil and in containers. I think the frost got to some of them, but never killed them. There are some people, one of the, some of the old boys believe that it does them, does them some good. I'll leave that down to you. Right, so one of the things, or one of the questions, that I see get asked a lot more so around sort of April time than now but still relevant not April time more so through winter but a question that gets asked a lot by new gardeners once they've decided between weed membrane and cardboard and they've let's say they've gone for weed membrane because that's what we're looking at they've gone to cut it and it's gone everywhere so one of the most regular questions I see getting asked is how can I stop it fraying? I'm going to show you. Under this pot, I've simply got my rhubarb crown. I'm not forcing it. The pot's there for a reason. You can see that it's all fraying and horrible and it's surrounded by membrane. I've just been on bought. Now you'll find if you're new to an allotment, a lot of, a lot of the old boys will have these already. It's a weed burner, butane weed burner. Nice and straightforward, fire on. And then just be mindful that wherever that goes is going to melt. So you need to act quite quickly. Travel round the pot. So the pot's there to protect the plant. I tend to find that this stuff doesn't carry a flame. And then off. Make yourself safe before you start messing with any of that. So off with the gas.
and there we go and obviously you taper the whole size to the plant it's the rhubarb you want quite a big space because you're going to want to feed this so you're going to need to get into it but you want quite a big space and it's quite a big plant and that's it that should help prevent that from fraying i'm going to cover this with wood chip regular subscribers will know that but there you go that's how you stop your thing from fraying this by the way this burner i'll try and remember to put a link in the description below it will be an affiliate link so if you do buy one you'll help support the channel won't cost you anything extra but this one i just got from the range but if you're a new allotment holder this is a tool that you'd build up over time and you'll find if you speak nicely to most of your allotment neighbors and tell them what you want it for and they're not going to be using it for hours they'll just say oh here you go i know i would so there you go that'll stop that spreading cover that in wood chip happy days on to the next job so yeah i've managed to do 19 buckets of potatoes all told today it's taken me the best part of an hour and a half but i tell you what if i'd have put that many potatoes in ground it would have taken me a day and i'd have been beat and i mean beat it is hard work putting potatoes in troughs and my hat's off to those who do it religiously. It really is. It really is hard work. I've done it and I will be doing it again this year. I've done, like I said, 19 buckets and I've got probably enough for one trench remaining and I'm not going to let them go to waste. I'll find space for them out in the garden. But that... But in pota the potatoes in buckets, it's yes, it's expensive to set up. There's no bones about that. It is expensive to set up. But you get three years out of your compost if you're being conservative. You get anywhere from one and a half to two and a half kilos of main crop potatoes per bucket per year for three years. It's not an expensive way in the long run. It's a in big investment to start. It is a big investment to start, but in the long run... Hey, oh, that's my fan on my uh, inverter. I better look at that. Yeah, I need to look at that, don't I? <laughs> it's a inv big investment to start, but it's, it's not a big investment in the grand scheme of things. In the long run, it is... It pays you back. It pays you back and then some every three years. So if you're careful, it's not an expensive way to grow potatoes. It's a very rewarding, very easy way to grow potatoes. You could grow them on your patio, in your back garden, on your allotment, in your front garden if it's secure enough, in a sunny conservatory if you really wanted to, although the plants do get a little big. But, you know, if there, and, and if you find a place and if you, if you put your pots in one particular area and then two weeks later you think, ah, they're really in the way, they can be moved. It's, it's not the end of the world. So do consider about doing potatoes in buckets. It is, a, it is such an easy way. And if you're like me and you've got a raised bed area of your plot, it utilises. Once plants are in and you're not needing all your paths and things like that, it utilises the space on your paths because you can put your buckets there. That's going to be it for me today, guys. Don't forget, please remember to press that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Press that thumbs up button. I try and get as much relevant content out as I can. I'm not a content farm. I'm not going to pump content out constantly for the sake of pumping it out where I walk around my garden and I laugh at things that I do that are silly. But that being said there probably is going to be a, a, a video this weekend of me just tidying cleaning and prepping the garden it's a necessary evil so yeah stay tuned subscribe press the like button press the dislike button if you press the dislike button please let me know why in the comments below not on facebook but on youtube I don't get in to the Facebook page quite so often. 
I do get scrutinised for posting on my uh, Grow Your Own Kitchen Garden Facebook profile, just my videos, but I do interact with the groups on my personal profile. I know that can be a little bit confusing, but that's just the way it's panned out for me. <sighs> Home time, it's dinner time. I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm dirty. Yeah, let's get off home. I'll see you later.